Alrighty. So we've got this guy going here, and I'm going to hold down Shift, and we're going to turn off that poly paint. And let's go to start up material, which for you guys will be Madcap Gray. And we're going to make some clothes for this guy. And if we have enough time, let me we'll make some pants, uh, the real version of these pants. And I think I'm going to start by making some Converse. The Converse that he has are kind of... He's going to be kind of thick, and there's also going to be a string going around, so it's not going to be straight up Converse, and it's got these little uh, lines through here, but that should be, it's generally a Converse sneaker, I think. Uh, hey, Bien, thanks for showing up. Um, I'm going to, so let's let's get some reference. So I'm going to go out of edit mode. I'm going to say always switch, hit control N. Now I'm going to sculpt these shoes in their own file for now, and then I'll transfer them to the other file. So how I'm going to do that, go to texture, import, and we are streaming, and we are streaming Turtle Power, Bebop, Reference, Shoes. So I'm going to try to find, you know what, we can probably start with a bottom view. So we'll go ahead and grab that, go into Texture, select that bottom view, add it to my spotlight here, and I'm going to take this opacity and we're going to drop it down. And we're also going to take the size and we're going to drop it down. So I can take this bottom profile and extrude up, and that'll be the base of what we're going to start with. If you want to move this down real quick, sorry. And go to my account. So on my RStation page, there is a ZBrush boot tutorial. And if you click on this upper hand corner, there's 18 videos. And there's also like a little JPEG right here. You can go to full size and click on it, and that'll kind of walk you through a process for making a complex boot. Um, we'll be making something simpler than that, uh, but you can follow along with this if you want. Go ahead and post this here. That's up to you guys. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna go, we're gonna hit Z here, and uh, let's go ahead and grab a polyplane, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, and make poly mesh 3D, and um, we're gonna just gonna paint this bottom profile of the shoe, and you know what? Let's straighten this out just a, a little bit. We'll hit Z, and then we'll rotate this shoe like so, and then we'll just paint this on here. Now, there's an al there's alternatives to this, of course. We can go over here to the texture map. We can add that shoe directly onto this polyplane. We'll do Shift Z. So we've got the shoe here. Now it's kind of squashed a little bit. So we need to go to Poly Paint here and do Poly Paint from Texture. Turn on MRGB. Poly paint from texture. Oh, hold on, shift and poly paint from texture. That'll change the aspect ratio of your um, flat, flat plane to match this one. And then now when we turn our texture on, you're gonna see it's the right size. Uh, if we want to mask through this and get a nice uh, overall shape for that shoe or the correct shape for that shoe, we need to go over here to geometry. I'm gonna turn on smooth modifier. We're gonna divide this, let's say divide it up until you get to about 263 polygons. And if you want to, you can even go through here and you can say poly paint from your texture. So that'll just transfer that texture to a poly paint. Then you can go over here to the RGB value, drop that down, go to color, fill object. And if you have white selected, let's go through and just kind of dumb that down a little bit. And you can go through here and you can mask here. And we're just gonna get that shape. Now, of course, you don't have to match this exactly. You can just do a vaguely shoe shape. It doesn't really matter that much. But since we have reference, we might as well. So again, we'll go through here and mask. You'd also use mask lasso, I suppose. Yeah, it might speed up the process a little bit. So hold down Control-Alt, go ahead and uh, tap. Let's check our profile here by going into Subtool, turn off Colorize. It looks pretty decent. We'll turn on Polyframe. We're gonna go to Delete Lower, go in here to Edge Loop. And we'll do an edge loop mass border around here. Control drag, control shift tap to select this poly group. And then we'll go to geometry modify topology delete hidden. And I like to work with nicer geometry than that. So we're going to go to geometry and we're going to go to Z remesher. We're going to say depth size down to zero. We'll say half, hit Z remesh, and we'll let that go. Hey, Marston, thanks for showing up. We're going to make a pair of shoes today. It's kind of a two-for-one deal. I need a pair of shoes for another project I'm doing, so I figured, why not? Okay, so uh, you know what? We'll just keep hitting zero measure half. And you don't have to do this. You can extract up uh, and get that kind of thickness, but you know what? If I'm going to bother 
making this shoe, I might as well get something uh, decent to start with. This is pretty decent. That's the overall shape I need. It's a lot easier to work with now. And like I said, this guy, the shoe that we're making for um, Bebop, he's going to have a lot wider feet, but this will give us a decent start. So now I'm going to hover over Q mesh, polygroup all. We're just going to Q mesh that up. Now it's going to flip my vertices, no big deal. Go down here to display properties, flip, and we're good to go. So now we need some more reference. Let's go into texture, import. I want a nice side view. Do I got a nice side view? Like, well, here's a three quarter view that's pretty good. We got three quarter in and out. And then I guess this is probably our best side view here. By the way, if you want good reference of things, go to eBay. They have, uh, you can get all sorts of, uh, you can type in exactly what you want and you will find reference for it. So this will be the inside of the shoe, I believe, here. So we can uh, crank up this opacity here. Yeah, that looks like the inside of the shoe. So this will be like the left shoe here. So I'm gonna turn that opacity down, hit Z. And then now that's basically what we're looking at here. And we can go through and we can kind of match this reference. Now, if we don't want to keep moving this reference around, uh, we can turn on perspective. That might help us match it a little bit better. There we go. And then uh, we can go into our movie and hit show. That's going to be under movie, timeline, show. I'm going to go ahead and store a key there. I'm going to unshow it. So now whenever I move my uh, object over, I can just do back and forth with my arrow key and then I'll put it right back where it should be. So I think this is vaguely correct. I'm also going to grab some reference here and then we'll do a, a side view here. And we can make this a little more stylized. It doesn't have to be uh, right on. Um, but I think that's generally correct. It also looks like on the inside of this shoe oops, this should see. Um, on the outside it's pretty flat and then it goes uh, kind of rounded. It's got like a little extra padding up front. And then on the inside, this kind of curves in a little bit. So I'm gonna hit the move brush. And up at the top here, this kind of comes out just a bit. It kind of flattens out. And again, we're just holding down shift and we're going to that top here. And then we'll look at kind of get that little lean into there. And then on the, let's go and turn off perspective mode. And if we want to make the rest of the shoe, we can just keep extruding up from this. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this off. I'm going to hold down Control Shift, isolate this top part here, hit Delete Hidden. And now we're going to Q Mesh Polygroup All, and we'll just Q Mesh right up again. We'll turn on our reference again, and uh, this is generally right. And then and kind of start from here and hold down Shift. Oops. Let's do Q Mesh. Polygroup Island. We're going to hold down Shift and we're going to pull this up and that's going to give us that uh, rounded front part here. We can go through and I can do a bevel edge loop complete. We can kind of round that off a little bit. And then on this back area here, we can say it's kind of a, it kind of slants up. Now, right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start sculpting this top part and then we can go through and rebuild it pretty quickly. So I'm just going to take this Q mesh. I'm just going to pull this straight up until we get the full length of our shoe here-ish. Something like this, and that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick uh, crease under my geometry crease menu, we'll do a crease PG. We'll turn on dynamic, we'll hit apply, and then we will immediately just go in here to Dynamesh, hit no, there we go, perfect. And this will be just a Dynamesh uh, that we can start sculpting on. Now, if I wanna go through and start sculpting on this, I can also use my RGB through here, turn off Z add. And I can paint, let's turn off L. I can just go ahead and paint that shoe right on there. So I'm gonna shift Z. Now I got a pretty good idea of where I need to go through and say maybe clip the shoe shape like so. And let's go back up here. We'll turn off poly paint. And then we can hold down shift to smooth. And if you want to, you can turn on Sculptors Pro. That'll get rid of those little nasty ones. Then we'll go in here with our trim brush and we'll go through and we'll just trim this out and this will be kind of that rounded front part through here and then there we go. Now I'm kind of looking at these shoes as well while I'm looking at like these shoes too. So I think 
I mean, we are eventually probably going to have to do something like this when we're all done. Uh, let's go ahead and actually let's straighten this out. Let's hit W, let's move multiple, and we'll go ahead and straighten this. And I guess, you know what? I guess that's pretty straight. Maybe here. Why is there, there's a, quite a bend in there. Let me see if that's right. Yeah, I mean, we copied it. Hmm. We can always straighten that out a little bit, but that'll work. Uh, so now we just have vaguely the shape that we need, and that's okay because we're just kind of blocking out this overall shape, and we're going to clean it up quite a bit as we go through. Um, but again, we're just trying to get that overall form real quick. I'm also going to turn off uh, Sculptures Pro. I don't need that anymore. I just use that for cleanup more than anything, really. Uh, your mileage may vary on that. Okay, and then back here, looks like it gets, oops, standard brush, turn on Z add. Let's turn up that Z intensity just a bit. So back here, kind of looks like it gets a little wrinkly. And then in the front part here, looks like this kind of comes back. I'm going to get my H polish brush, and we're just going to polish this back a little bit. And for this base here, let's go ahead and do a, uh, we'll go ahead and crease it, crease level of say three, smooth subdiv of four, maybe crease level of two. There we go. And we're also going to make this just like a little bit thicker. So let's go ahead and uh, turn off move multiple, go to unmash mesh center, reset to world, and we'll just thicken this up just a bit. That'll work. So uh, on the outside of the shoe here, I'm going to pull this toe out just a bit. And just control drag to redyne the mesh. And I'm working at a fairly low resolution. I don't need anything super high for this part. Good enough. Let's bring our reference back and we'll go ahead and turn back on our perspective. And it uh, also looks like that back heel comes in quite a bit, but on this one, it doesn't. Now that's on the inside. So it looks like on the outside, maybe the back heel doesn't come in that much. Uh, but on the inside it does. So if you want to get that particular, um, you could go over here and you could be like, hey, you know what? On the back of the heel, this kind of scoops in just a bit. On the outside, it's actually pretty flat or maybe it even comes out a little bit. I think so. And then you kind of lean into that a little bit and go to the top. And we'll kind of match this here. Something like that. And then perspective again. And generally speaking, I won't work with perspective on too much unless I'm trying to match reference. And if I need to, I can also go in here to my draw. I don't know what focal length they were using for this camera, but we'll just stick with 50 for now. It's not a big deal. So now we'll go through here and again, let's kind of match this up. A little bit and let's raise our resolution just a tiny bit here and then we'll repaint this and this will go ahead let's turn off Z add and we'll go through here and we just paint on our details and then we'll go back in here RGB turn down color fill object and we'll just kind of dumb that down so we can see a little bit better so now uh, this white part looks like it goes across and it comes up quite a bit so we can actually combine that side with here, or we can just click on here. We can unmask this. And we're going to raise this up a bit. And it also looks like, yeah, on the toe part here, these all come up. So I'm going to take this, control tap just to blur that out, and we're going to hit W. And we're going to tilt this up just a tiny bit here. And then we'll mask this out, control tap to mask it out. We'll tilt that up just a little bit. And then as it comes up, it might even get a little bit smaller. So we can go in here, we can, uh, let's go ahead and just reset this. We'll go into deformation or deformer. And we'll go ahead and add some resolution in this direction here. And towards this front, we'll hold down control, alt, and we'll grab these two. And we can just squeeze that down just a little bit and we'll kind of pull that out as well. And maybe fatten that up just a little bit. 
good enough. And then on this top part here, we can go ahead and we can start breaking the shoe down a little bit, but we want to make sure uh, we're sculpting. So I'm going to bring in just a little bit more reference. We're going to go to import and we'll grab maybe a front three quarter and we'll grab maybe just a front. So we'll take both of these. We'll add that to spotlight. These two, we don't need any more. We'll go ahead and just X out of those. And then we'll go ahead and go to texture, front, add. I'm going to say tile proportional. We'll just put these side by side. Scale them up just a bit here. We'll say we just need the left one here. And then maybe this one here. So now with these in our screen, we can go back and we can show our movie menu here. Turn on perspective. We can kind of match this up. And take that one out, store it. And then over here, we'll go ahead and match this one up. And we'll go ahead and store this one. So uh, we can go back here and we can just switch between these views. And then we can alt tap through these two different objects here. So we'll go ahead and take this one. And I like, think that's one, this one's pretty correct. I'm going to hit W and we're just going to scale it up just a bit. Make, just add a little bit of thickness to that one. And then this here, uh, looks like that toe is getting a little bit intense. So we can go through here and we can kind of just move this down. And that's okay. And we'll go to the other view. Yeah, that's okay. Let's go ahead and turn off our poly paint. It's a bit easier to see here. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab that move brush, something like this. So now we can paint both views. So we can go through here. Let's turn up RGB intensity up to 100. So we can go ahead and grab like maybe this front view here and go back to that side view. So we can kind of match these up a little bit. Go through here, maybe paint this view on. And the inside view, let me see if I even have one here. I guess that'll work. Let's take RGB intensity, go here, color fill object. And again, we'll just knock that back just a little bit. And honestly, we can keep this blue one on here as well because that, that matches fairly well. So let's keep knocking that back. And then we'll start uh, blocking this out. So we'll make sure we're okay. So we're gonna take the Damien standard brush. We're gonna go right along the side here. And this is about where I want that cut to go. And then we're gonna hold down Alt and we're gonna pull up along that seam. And then over here, we're gonna push in just right along that seam there. And it looks like the seam needs to come in just a little bit here. And then that white part is going to cut straight across here. So we're just going to cut right across here. And it looks like it's the same on both sides. There's a good shot. Sorry, got a ton of reference up here on the bottom. Getting a little bit lost. There we go. So if I turn off my poly paint and clean this up a little bit, I know it looks ugly, but again, it's going to be pretty, pretty quick to clean up. Let's go to Smooth Stronger. And we got the toe here. We're going to grab our clay brush. We're going to round this out. We're going to make sure it's far enough back. Go ahead and push this back a little bit. Or you can just take the move brush and do a little bit of a softer. You don't even need a mask. Let's take that move brush and just move it back. So there's the toe. And then this will just be a curve. Oops, let's turn up RGB, let's turn on Z add. So this will come down this way. This will come down this way. This goes straight across. And grab the clay brush again. And then all the way up through here is the laces. Up through the side. Ah, 
Hold on. Uh, question. I did model high and low poly, link low. I don't know how to organize files for bakes, different material selections based on poly groups, etc. I also don't know why I can't get a job as a 2D designer. What's wrong with my portfolio? Um, I don't see a link anywhere, but um, organizing for bakes, you can do a, um, well, I got some stuff on that. I'm trying to get my reference to work. There we go. You can go to, uh, let's see. I guess my sci-fi pistol series is probably your best bet for that one. I mean, you can use any number of things. This is just going through and organizing and just baking in Painter, but you can use, Mar I generally use Marmoset for my final bakes. So you can go through there, just Google Marmoset baking, and you can use that, or you can bake in X normal, or you can, you can even bake in ZBrush if you want to. Um, I don't generally, but let's see. So I've got this view is what I want here. And then I'm looking for just a quick insight. I'm going to narrow down my reference so I don't get too lost here. I should have just done one just for shoes. Didn't realize there was, you know what, this will be fine. We'll just use one picture. So uh, outside, you know, if you want to work on both at the same time, what I can do is because now I'm looking at, well, I can look on the inside here. So this is going to kind of come up to a point, and then this is going to come down this way, and it's just going to kind of meet right there, and then right along here is where the little um, holes are going to be. And of course, if you ever Z-remesh, without your poly paint on, you will lose your poly paint. So control drag with your poly paint on. And then now you can see, uh, this is pretty much what I was getting at, just this line right through here. And then these are really gonna be where you're gonna end up putting your laces. So that'll match up pretty good. And then you can put those little eyelets here and then your little sticker here. Let's go ahead and turn off RGB. And then on the outside, no sticker. Eyelets. This will come down through here, generally speaking. So I think we're in pretty good shape. I think we're about done. I know it looks super duper ugly, um, but <laughs> this is where you can start. Again, just getting your vague forms into place. And then the laces we can do, I'll probably just do with um, Oops. Or laces we'll just do with z-spheres and then we'll flatten them out probably if I if I was a betting man. So we'll go through here, we'll raise that up just a little bit. All right, let's say this is our shoe. Uh, the tongue just kind of goes through there and then we'll go through and we'll pull this in here. There we go. I'll take this H polish and there we go. So now, how do we start breaking this down for uh, making the real shoe? And that should be a fairly straightforward process. You can use Z-Remesher to get these basic shapes. That's probably what we'll do, just to save us a little bit of time. Or you can manually go through and retopologize. So we're going to get kind of a thickness right around here. And then this will be another volume through here. Let me go ahead and move Accu. Turn this out. If you want to, you can hold down. Uh, control and you can take all these and you can kind of push these back a little bit and again it's just a rough mesh but that's okay we're gonna refine this using more better techniques here but again just trying to get those overall volumes and we'll go ahead and pull this out all right and also I'm gonna guess that this toe part comes up a little bit higher. Usually your toe part's a little higher than the outside part. So we'll go ahead and make a good guess on that. There we go. So we've got our sneaker here. Let's go ahead and break this down for a little bit easier work. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this around uh, just for reference. And we'll duplicate this off and we'll go ahead and turn the poly paint off for that one. We'll grab this one here. We'll go ahead and turn off that other eyeball. And let's go ahead and 
Let's go into solo mode and let's start slicing this up. Let's turn off perspective. Let's hit Control W, make this all one poly group. Let's do a last little bit of cleanup here. Maybe go into our clay brush. And if you really want to go through and like do a beautiful sculpt for this, that's that's up to you. Um, usually I'll just grab this stuff. Let's go ahead and grab this. I'm going to scale this in one direction so we kind of flatten that out a little bit here. Make it a little bit easier to slice through, a little more predictable. Make sure all of this is kind of even-ish. Okay. So now I'll break this up into its component parts. So this top piece here, we're going to hold down Control Shift and we're going to go into Slice. Let's turn off the Line. So we can just kind of slice this end off and we'll go from the top view. That probably makes more sense. Huh? And then through here, and that's really all we need for this part here. So we'll hold down Control Shift and isolate that. And you know what? We can even split that off. Subtool split. And then through here, uh, this is just going to be like a wraparound piece of canvas. So we'll go ahead and keep all of that. And it might be easiest just to go through and mask that result. So if you go through here and just hold down Control. Sorry, it's going to be kind of boring. We'll go through and just mask this and then have it curve down. Go all the way around. And again, just like when we were doing the bottom sole part, we'll let Z Remesher do the heavy lifting. And for most things, any this is more of a hard surface model too. I know it's like a shoe and it's nice and organic and stuff. But if you go through and look at that boot tutorial I linked at the very beginning, 90% um, of it is hard surface modeling or just kind of basic box modeling and getting the forms. And then 10% of it is going through and sculpting a few little um, details on the cloth and stuff like that. So let's go through here. And on the bottom here, if you want to, if you hold down control and you turn on back face masking, it's under your auto masking section here in your brush settings. You can actually go along here and you and it should just avoid that other side pretty well. Um, there's also, do I bring in the depth? You can also go into your depth, you hold down control. And if you turn on depth mask, you can cap, you don't go down to zero, but go down to a very small value. And then, um, is it on this side? If you pull down, trying to remember. You can turn on, you can do a depth mask from the top or a depth mask from the bottom and it'll it'll like respect, there you go, it'll respect those edges. So you can go through and you can just kind of use depth mask and back face masking maybe to kind of keep you away from those edges. So we can go along here a little quicker and eh, it generally left the back side okay. So again, we'll go hold down control, go through here. We can go ahead and turn off that depth mask. And then hold down control alt and tap. And we'll clean that up a little bit. And we can always trim that bottom piece out. That's not a big deal. So we can hit control W. I prefer to do an edge loop mask border. It's not gonna do a great job probably, but we can go ahead and get a, maybe a slightly cleaner line around here. Control shift to isolate that part. We'll go ahead and split that off. And again, like this pe these little pieces that are hanging out. Let's just go ahead and slice right through the very bottom of this. Well, control shift tap, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. You can even clean this one up just by going through and slicing. And this is just going to help the remesher make good decisions when it goes through and remeshes. And in fact, this will too. We don't really need Z remesher to build in geometry for these eyelets. That's going to be something we put in later or the seam even. We can use um, Oh, I mean, I guess we could, if we wanted to really make that stitch, eh, you know what, we'll do the stitches in, um, we'll do that later. And then also this is just going to be a little add-on, so we don't need to worry about that. And this will sculpt in later, so again, just giving Z remesher those volumes is really all we need to worry about. Okay, and last but not least, we have our tongue, so we'll just go through here, and this one, I'm going to turn on double under your display properties, the very bottom, and I'm just going to slice through here, I'm going to slice through here, control shift click that one, delete hidden, and this one, let's just clean this up real quick, I'm going to go into my polish by features under your deformation menu, let's polish the heck out of that, and that'll be our tongue. So we've got the overall volumes here, 
everything matches up and this tongue we're going to have to do a little bit more modeling but we'll start with this so we'll go into the line here uh, turn on line and poly groups and we'll go back to our zero measure underneath our geometry and we'll say half adapt size down to zero and we'll just keep hitting half until we get something usable and that tongue and if we want to pull out to a corner here we can go back into move accu we can pull that out to a corner here here we go now like i said before we're gonna need to do a little bit more work on this one so we're just going to kind of pull these corners down or what we could do instead we could say q mesh polygroup island or polygroup all pull that back let's go back down let's turn off double and then flip And then let's do a, uh, under your polygroups, we'll do a group by normals, and we'll say mask polygroup all, control tap to invert that, and we'll just pull these down. Same thing for this side. Be a little bit easier to work with, something with thickness. We can always get rid of that thickness later, and we will, but this is generally what I'm looking to do. Let's kind of pull this inside here, and then inside here. So now I can do, uh, let's grab both of those polygroups, control shift, drag to invert that, and we'll grab this one here, hit control W, and geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And this can be our new tongue geometry. Like this, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit so we can go back into polish by features, kind of soften that up a bit. And again, we want to pull out the corners. And at this point you could tell Ziri Mesher, you know what? Uh, I think those are rounded at the top. Let's go ahead and zero mesh same. Give me some new geometry, maybe tighten those corners up and round that out. And that'll be a pretty decent tongue. And if we want to go ahead and give this thickness now, we can. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone for now. And we'll go ahead and do this one. So now this one, let's go ahead and, you know what, if I want to clean up these edges, uh, I can, it's not, I don't think it'll be a huge deal, but just in case, let's go in here to masking, mask by border, let's go ahead and grow that once, control tap to invert that, and then we'll go in here and we'll say polish by features, let's do an open circle, and we're just going to smooth those uh, corners out a little bit, and then now we can go through here, we'll say zero measure half, adapt the size down to zero, uh, question is there's still value in sculpting cloth folds or is it all done with Marvelous Designer now? So can you share some advice because I'm struggling right now. Uh, I do all my cloth in Marvelous Designer. Your mileage may vary. I have a quick start guide for that. Um, I don't know how useful it is. I mean it's fairly old and it's also super basic but um, here's a Marvelous Designer quick guide, quick start guide. Uh, but it is good to know how to sculpt cloth. Uh, at the end of the day though I'm I'm always production minded, I'm always workflow minded, so when it comes to like, well, I can get great reference and I can learn how to sculpt cloth really well, or I can just use Marvelous Designer with a pattern already made and I can just sim it in 15 minutes and get something that would take me a couple hours to sculpt, and realistically, probably a day to sculpt because cloth can get complex sometimes. You know, pick and choose your battles. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and Marvelous Designer is also super easy, so that doesn't hurt. Uh, but also, it's also good to know how to sculpt cloth because there's going to be instances where uh, Marvelous Designer might actually be really difficult to make what you're trying to make, or um, it might just be faster to kind of go through, especially if you're doing concept stuff, just to go through and quickly block out clothing and just knowing how cloth reacts. And you, there's a lot, you don't even have to use like 3D. There's books uh, on drawing cloth that have the exact same principles you would need in order to sculpt cloth. So we'll just keep hitting zero mesh half. There we go. I think that'll work. So, uh, yeah, that might be a little bit easier. Um, what was I going for? Um, <laughs> yeah, sculpt, you sculpt cloth, learn how to sculpt cloth, or at least like how things, and also like when you're animating, or if you're just like sculpting, well, no, because I would still pose it and then I would resim the cloth so that it would take into account the pose. But you know what, going in and cleaning up the cloth and uh, learning all that stuff, there's nothing wrong with knowing it for sure. Um, 
let's take a look at this. So let's go ahead and let's do a, I'm going to run a close holes on here. And I'm just going to, let's polish this out just a little bit. I'm trying to decide how I want to handle this shape. I can go through here and I put a sphere in here and I can um, zero mesh this or I can just zero mesh it as is or I can zero mesh this one and then close the holes manually. Let's do this. Let's hold down control shift. Let's go to trim curve and let's going to trim that bottom off. And that's going to give me a poly group here, a poly group back here and a poly group up here. So now with all those, I can go ahead and clean this up by again doing a polish by features and just running that. And let's do polish by features open circle and just tap a few times. So there's the overall nice clean shape I was looking for. But of course now I want nice clean geometry because I live for it. And let's go ahead and take, let's go into transparency mode and we'll just take this here. I'm just trying to close up these gaps a little bit. Now when we add thickness that'll help too, but just for now I'm just eyeballing that. Okay, so we got the little uh, rubberized toe cap here. And in my reference, again, I'm trying to balance between do I do what's in here or do I do a pair of converse because I'm going to use that for another project. Uh, I'm going to stick with the converse for now and then we'll modify it uh, for Bebop. How about that? So uh, through here, if we want, we can say, okay, zero mesh. Go ahead and keep my groups. Uh, smooth groups down to zero because my groups are already pretty smooth. I don't need to keep smoothing it while I do this. We'll do zero mesh or half, adapt to size down to zero, and then see what result that gives us. If it doesn't give us a great result, we can just take that top cap. That might be a little bit low. Um, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Back, uh, that's about what I would expect. Bottom, that's about right. Eh, this is fine. Now, I did do something kind of weird back here. I can go through here and I can just say delete that edge. And yeah, we can get rid of that. So, uh, now let's go ahead and for this one, let's do another uh, crease PG. It's going to be our polygroup menu crease level of two. Smooth so div of three under your dynamic. And this will just be a little bit easier to work with. So now we need to start deciding, do I want to start adding thickness and finishing out this shoe? Start adding all the little detail -y stuff. Um, or do I even want to add all the detail stuff? These are the questions you must ask yourself. So I'm going to go through here. We're going to say, let's, we can do Q mesh. Extrude might be a little safer. Polygroup ball. And we'll just push this in. And that'll be, I'm going to over crank the thickness just a bit, just because I'm not trying to do, I'm trying to get something that'll read from a distance. So we'll maybe over crank it a bit. And again, display properties flip. And that'll generally be the shape. Now at this point, I can go through here. I can also, I can keep doing a polish by feature because every single one of these uh, polygroup borders is a feature, but I also want to keep some of these crispy. So for example, these corners down here, I'm going to run a crease tolerance just to get, we can go ahead and crease the polygroups, uh, but it also crease those corners here. And now when I do a polish by feature, let's do a closed circle because we want to maintain our volumes and we can slowly just start um, polishing that up. Now this one here can be rounded, so I can go ahead and um, crease edge, hold down alt, uncrease, and then again we'll just do a, actually those are rounded up top too. I guess I shouldn't be so worried about that. Uncrease those. And then again do another polish by features. There we go. Pretty decent. And then this tongue here, hmm, I'm actually going to take this one and we're going to extrude polygroup all out this way because I'm going to fill up that gap in there. I think that'll work. And then same thing for this one. These ones I do want to keep crease, so we'll just run a crease here. And then if, again, if this, this shouldn't pick up those creases, then we'll just do another polish by features, close circle. There we go. Nice. And we'll go in here with our move brush. So now we're moving around much fewer polygons. I don't have to go through and sculpt for days trying to get nice smooth forms. I can just use fewer polygons to do the trick for me. And then uh, we just need to go through and do a little bit of wrinkle sculpting at the very end. And we'll, I'll tap this one over here and we'll kind of push this down. So it's like using um, like an envelope of polygons here to give you the nice smooth forms. And I think that's it. So now we just need to go through, and eh, let's see. Do I want to over crank 
that front part because his front part seems like it takes up a lot more room. Hmm. Now we'll leave that alone for now. It also looks like uh, the rubber thick part uh, comes out quite a bit. And if we do Shift D, you're going to see this is a real geometry. So we're working still here very, uh, fairly low res. So we can go through here and we can kind of go through and we'll over crank that rubber thickness on the sides here. And on the back side. And on this side. So that's going to be like the thick part of the rubber. And it also looks like it gets like a very thin rubber that goes up even higher than this and has like a little black, black and white uh, stripes. We'll put that in a separate geo. But I think that'll get us close here. Now for these ones, we can go in here and we can start, um, let's say, crease level of 1. Smooth subdiv of 3. And then same thing for this one. Crease level of 1. Smooth so div of three. And that'll kind of give us uh, rounded edges up here. And you know what? These are still, I mean, that's supposed to be thin, so it's not a huge deal, but um, let's go ahead and pull this down a little bit. I, I do want to over crank it a little bit. So you're always thinking like, okay, if I see this shoe from back here, is it going to be too thin? So we'll go in here and we'll grab these poly groups and we'll just hold down shift as we extrude. And I'll just pull along those surface normals. And then same thing for this one. We'll just go to the back. We'll just pull that in. OK. 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 I think we're getting close. So uh, our volumes are correct. We've checked our reference probably at this point. We'll go back and turn this one on. We can move this. This is our original sculpt. We can just move this over. And we can go, OK. So is this generally what we're looking at for a Converse shoe? Sure. So we can go ahead and we can delete that out of our scene. And now we can start sculpting in earnest. Now, we've already subdivided this up virtually. So we can go, we can do Shift D and that'll turn off our subdivision. We can hit D, that'll turn it back on. Uh, we probably want to go ahead and apply those. So we're going to go up here and we'll say apply. I'll tap this one. This one we can probably leave alone because we don't need to do a whole lot of sculpting. And even this one we can probably leave alone. But this one, we need to sculpt on it. So we are going to go ahead and apply those subdivisions. Uh, we don't need to go into Dynamesh or anything because I like having subdivision levels, especially when I'm sculpting cloth. <clears throat> so the ability to go through here. Let's turn down. I guess we don't need to see our movie anymore either. Let's turn down our Z intensity. And we can go through the back, and we can just start sculpting in uh, what we see. We can use reference for this. We can go through and we can paint on, you know, where those wrinkles are. Um, let's turn on our smooth stronger, but I think we'll be okay. And then on the side here, now these are going to be fairly clean, uh, not too banged up. Let me see. I guess this reference is okay. I'm actually a little gun shy on moving my reference around. It already crashed on me for some reason. Uh, then through here on this side, it looks like it gets a little bit uh, wrinkly through here. And then that Converse sticker, uh, we can apply that. There's a couple different cool ways we can apply that. And it doesn't even have to have Converse on it necessarily. Um, actually, let me get a back view, sorry. Give me a sec. Yeah, something like this. So we are missing a little component, although on the red shoes, yeah, I guess they are too. That should be easy to add. So um, let's go through here. And we'll push this down. There we go. And then subdivide up. I go up to subdivision level three. And then you can just keep refining this. Now on the back here, we do have a um, kind of just a strip and it actually goes underneath to the rubber so we can model that in if we feel like it and honestly it looks like this heel let's turn off perspective here I kind of pulled out the top of that heel and now I'm gonna pull out the bottom of the heel looks like it got a little bit away from me there this I do like that kind of scoop in I think that does exist um, but that heel I didn't like so much even that out 
There we go. So uh, back here, we can alt tap this one here and let's go and we'll duplicate this piece off here. And then if we go down to subdivision level one, we may be able uh, to even find, if we hold down control shift, isolate that red one. Geometry modified file, you really hidden, you know, blah, 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 you know the drill. And then hold down alt, we can go ahead and just paint, oops, delete higher. We can go through here and we can just paint out where that strip is. Um, but if we want to make sure it's perfectly straight, we can just go through here and we can just slice it. So we can say, hey, you know what? You are here and you are here. Or if you want to get even fancier, hold down control shift space bar, do it by your brush radius. You can make sure that those are perfectly straight. That's fine. Um, now, if you want it to follow your wrinkles, you may want to hold off on doing this part. So let's hold off on doing that part. Let's all tap this and let's work on our wrinkles a little bit more because if we, again, if we want that strap to follow or that back thing to follow our wrinkles, we need wrinkles first. So again, we have geometry here. We're just gonna go through and I'm going to turn my lazy radius back on. We'll crank that up just a bit. Some of your stroke menu and just going through, looking at my reference here and just kind of vaguely putting in Let's see here, looks like, and then through here, looks like there's a nice um, big one. Wrinkle, let's keep turning down our, so I, I usually use Smooth Stronger, but when we're using Smooth Stronger on lower resolution uh, files, it can get a little bit overpowering, so I just go ahead and turn that down just a bit. And smooth, smooth, smooth. Then, and again, this, this my reference I'm looking at is kind of backwards. You know what I can do? Let's crush fingers. Control drag this out, and then we'll flip horizontally. There we go, boom. Alternating, much better. I'm using Quadro Reference Viewer, and I can just control drag out a copy, and then uh, flip horizontally. It works so much better when you're doing things like shoes. Let's go through here. Uh, this stuff is just going to be all stitches. I'm not going to be too worried about that. And when you're doing cloth, you probably want to stay away from like doing like really loopy, uh, bendy stuff. It's a little bit more like straight across and then uh, down and then straight across and then down. There are, things are usually a bit more linear. They go from a, a point to another point. And then for the inside mesh here, looks like something like, ah, let me go to the other reference here. Um, it's not quite as severe as the outside. And again, we're just stepping up through our subdivision levels and uh, getting, these are gonna be like, you know, secondary forms. And let's take a look at that back view again. Kind of looks like it flattens out back here too. It's kind of like this comes down. We can even go into our clay brush here. Now, when you're sculpting on very thin meshes, uh, if you're doing something drastic like this, it'll really start pulling through. The standard brush, I don't care about too much, um, but if you want to, you can go ahead and turn on back face masking under your auto masking section. And then same thing for your clay brush, just turn on back face masking. So it tends to leave the inside faces alone, especially if you're dyna meshing, but um, even for and I guess that makes sense that this would be flatter because we are going to have a uh, strip going through here. So that'll uh, kind of flatten that out just because we have like a reinforced strip, cloth strip going down the back. So again, going through here, go ahead and uh, let's grab our clay brush. And we'll go ahead and kind of take these masses up a little bit. Inside here, okay. Maybe just put a little. And again, if you want it to read, or if you want to do like uh, really go crazy on the wear and tear on these things, like Bebop, if I want to finish his out, I'm probably going to go through and uh, make them even more wrinkly. So you can kind of do like, you know, where the foot bends, you can put in a lot more wrinkles through here. So you know what, now that I say that, let's go ahead and apply those subdivision levels so we can kind of start going through here. 
we can maybe put in just a little visual interest on the inside here. Because I don't see in the reference, it's all pretty clean, but then again, these are like, these are vintage Converse, but they're not really heavily utilized. They're selling them, so they're going to be a little nicer than what you would find on a, a warthog that's been mutated into, uh, or a, a guy that's been mutated into a warthog, so he might not be buying his Converse off eBay in mint condition. So tell a story. So there we go. Subdivision level four will go up. And then we'll go through. And oh, you know what? We had smooth subdivide uh, turned off. When we very first subdivided our very first plane uh, and we extracted that geometry off, we had turned off smooth subdivide. So that made it so that when as we were subdividing, it was leaving the faceting behind. I was like, why is it doing that? Uh, that would be why. So just be careful of that. Turn smooth modifier back on if you're doing um, that kind of thing. So we'll go through here. And over here, we're going to do the eyelets as well. That'll be, that should probably be pretty easy. Get on the back here. It's a little more interesting over here. And again, we're going to put that strap right along the back. So if this is generally what we're making, uh, we want to put a cloth strap on here. This is where I would go, okay, I want to maintain a little bit of that curvature. So now we'll feel comfortable going ahead and duplicating this off, holding that control shift, isolating that outside polygroup, deleting lower, deleting hidden, going through here and saying, I want to slice here. Oops, we still have our brush radius on. Control shift, turn on brush radius. You can turn brush radius on and use that, but I'm just gonna take this one, isolate this one, delete hidden. And again, we're gonna let the zero measure do the heavy lifting for us. So half depth size down to zero. And depending on how low you go, you are gonna start losing a bit of that uh, curvature, but you can also go through here and you can say, let's show you a little trick. So, um, or am I? Yeah, we'll go here, we'll hit project all, and that'll go ahead and project those details back. And then what we can do is we can say Q mesh um, polygroup all, and we'll pull this in to give that thickness, and then we'll say flip under display properties, and then we're going to say run a crease tolerance, hit control D to subdivide, isolate just that top part, and then we'll hit project all, control, bring everything back, control D to subdivide, isolate just that pop to pop tart, <laughs> top part, uh, project all, and then we'll hit uh, W. And now we've basically projected those wrinkles onto this one here. And then of course we need that thickness. So I'm just going to pull this back just a little bit. There we go. And then we'll go through here and we'll just pull those down. And that'll be our um, little back cloth part. Let's go pull this up. Now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do uncrease all underneath our crease menu, wherever that is. Uncrease all, hit control D to subdivide. And that's pretty decent. So we can go through here and we can kind of maybe continue a little bit of that conversation onto the back. And all right, good start to our converse here and we'll start um, detailing it out just a little bit. So I got behind uh, a little bit on here. Um, hard surface people say that when you are done them in ZBrush, you need to model them in Max or Maya. They mean retopologizing or what for texturing? Uh, about hard surface. Yeah, you could do them in ZBrush, Maya, Max, Moto, Blender. Any, anybody who says you have to do hard surface in one program is a hobbyist. <laughs> there, there'll be a million people uh, proving them wrong every day. Uh, now that's not to say there's not techniques uh, and workflows that are more beneficial than doing like, you know, super destructive workflows or anything like that. But at the end of the day, if mostly what you're doing is extruding a face, uh, you can extrude a face in any program. Uh, advice for ZBrush, that would just be getting really good reference and then um, to sculpting the hell out of it. I don't have any like cloth brushes or anything. Um, as you can probably tell, you can make some, but honestly, it's like getting good reference and going through and just matching it. So like if you're sculpting a pair of jeans, uh, keep 
the resolution while you're getting your primary and secondary forms, keep your resolution low and then subdivide up. And then as you subdivide, go through and uh, just keep refining. So in this case, it would be like, I'm gonna go in here with my Damien standard brush and kind of put in a little heavier of a crease here. And then we're gonna hit smooth to smooth that out. And then over here, I might grab the clay brush because this looks like a little bit of a flatter pinch. And then it kind of turns into more of a rolled pinch. So it goes flat to rolled and then it kind of creases in a little bit and then it kind of smooths down so that would just be me going through and trying to match the reference as I see it and you could even go through here uh, you can you can do a pinch so if you want to go through and like crisp up some of these edges you can go pinch you can actually go to reproject higher if you go down and then smooth that pinch out and then say reproject higher it'll go through and kind of even that geometry out just a bit so that's another thing you can do um, through here. Now I'm going to put the eyelets in before I start doing the wrinkles on this side because I don't want to put a big fat wrinkle through where an eyelet is because that's not going to look right. Um, but for these wrinkles here, I think that'll be fine. Um, rebuild the mesh at the right angle, for example, on the plane without touching the border. Yes, you can rebuild the mesh with zero mesh should build in your hard right angles. Uh, Substance painter maps don't look the same in Unreal Engine. Export all the maps, they don't look the same on Unreal Engine. Same even if you use V-Ray or other renders on Maya. Uh, yeah, Unreal Engine's a real-time engine, so it's not going to have all the tricks and you're probably going to have to spend a lot of time tuning. In fact, yeah, you can go into Marvelous Designer with the same maps and get a drastically different result. Um, yeah, Unreal's not a great one-to-one -one at least right now, as far as like, hey, I can throw it into iRay, looks great, put it in Unreal, looks really bad. Uh, that's just Unreal materials and having to go in and tune your materials and your textures uh, to get it to play correctly, especially when you get into like layered materials and stuff like that and masks. Um, Uh, low poly, uh, I'm not using Z modeler, but you could use Z model. I mean, I guess we are using a little bit of Z modeler as we go through. Uh, what's a requirement to be part of the Pixelogic artist like me? Uh, I really don't know. I was just a enthusiastic young man uh, doing ZBrush stuff, and they contacted me. Uh, I guess you can contact them. Go to ZBrushLive.com, and you can say, "Hey, I'm interested." Uh, I use any other program in tandem with ZBrush? Yeah. Um, Mostly, I would say Maya, a little bit of Blender. I'm hit or, hit or miss on that one. I'm still learning it. Um, uh, Fusion 360 a little bit. I, on the modeling side, I'm trying to remember. Let me go through my programs here real quick. I do mostly video editing now. Uh, yeah, I don't really do a whole lot of asset making anymore. Uh, so... Wish I had a better answer for you there, but um, yeah, Marmoset, Substance Painter, Substance Designer. Um, trying to think what else. All of it. I, I try to use everything just because I like learning through things, and I, uh, I think programs are fun and awesome, and the people that make them are awesome, and uh, I like you know, people making new tools and new workflows and stuff is probably my favorite thing in the world. I haven't been able to do a whole lot of that recently, unfortunately, um, but I'm trying to get back into it. So we'll go through here. We haven't put in stitches yet. Now, at this point, I don't know that I would actually put stitches in ZBrush, but since we're on Pixelogic channel and we're sculpting in ZBrush, we can talk about it. And we can certainly do it. I wouldn't stop you from doing it. Uh, it could be really cool for your renders or doing like super high resolution detailed renders. Uh, putting the actual modeled stitches in uh, is killer. Uh, now, from a production standpoint, I probably wouldn't just because if I'm baking everything down, um, stitches in ZBrush can be a little bit destructive because if I ever want to make changes to the height or the material of the stitches, I have to make sure my material map IDs are baked out correctly. And if I want to go through and make any changes, I can't just do it on a slider and a layer. I have to go back and change the actual physical model. Um, but, you know, sometimes you got to go in and model some stitches. So we'll do that this morning. I think that'll work. And then through here, again, we're going to play up a little bit of these wrinkles as well. Just kind of go through and really that up. Okay, so let's put in some details through here. Now, 
if I'm going to be adding insert mesh brushes, these ones don't have dynamic, or they have dynamic turned on, but they don't have subdivision history. Or you can just put in a null object. You can go through here and you can say insert, uh, let's do poly mesh 3D. You can, you can insert anything, because anything that's a poly mesh 3D already um, will automatically be turned into a poly mesh 3D, so you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But I can just leave that in here, and then through here we can go ahead and insert in poly mesh. Now, to know where these things are going to go, let's use our reference here, and we'll turn on perspective. And we've got about where this stuff's going to end up. So, oops, I'm going to put this into place. And this is going to help us line up where our eyelets are going to go. So we'll turn on RGB again. And we'll just say, hey, and it'll also help us, let's turn off Z. It'll also help us put our stitches into if we, or that, at least that width, we can kind of go through there. And then on the other side, um, you know what, that might not work that well. Let's do this. Let's move this over and then Let's hit Z, and on this one, we're going to flip this, or there is a flip horizontally, right? Extend, tile, flip, mirror, H, there we go. And then we're going to say Z, and then we'll go ahead and steal these inside eyelets. So again, just line this up, so we don't have to do any guesswork. RGB, Z add, there we go. We can go ahead and turn off lazy radius here. There we go. So now I know exactly where those eyelets are going to go. Uh, in order to see this a little bit easier, we're going to go through here and we're going to say, what are we going to say? We're going to say color fill with white selected. We're just going to dumb those down just a bit. So now with our, our star selected, we can go through here. Let's turn off transparency. Go to BI brush insert and we have clothing stuff and we have like little eyelets. So we can do eyelet. We don't need front and back eyelets, do we? No, we're not getting that fancy. So we can go through here and we'll just put in an eyelet. Now when I go to drag these on, we want it to embed into the surface. So we're gonna say embed of zero. So when we draw these out, yeah, that's about right. And then do they need to be thinner? If they need to be thinner, like if we hit, we can hit D for dynamic. Um, they are a little bit thick, but I kind of like that. It just gets them to read better. If you wanted to, you can drop that Z intensity down. And then as you drag it out, it'll be a little bit thinner. You know, I kind of like that too. Let's split the difference. Let's say 80, 79. So now the other thing is we want these to all be the same size. So I'm going to go through here and hold down control. Uh, and that'll snap it to my brush size. That's actually pretty darn close. So let's say draw size of 22. We can go through here. And I'm gonna, I'm more gonna follow. I'm gonna use these as the left to right placement, but I'm going to follow the geometry as far as this placement here. So we're gonna go through here, and we're gonna hold down Control, and just snap these eyelets right along here. And then as again, I'm just holding down Control as I go through. And there we go. Now, if I want to, I can also go through, and we can. Uh, these are all different poly groups. We can hit W and we can control tap any of these and go through and we can just slide them up or we can go into mass by poly groups or topological make a really big brush or a really small brush actually you can do brush size of one you can go through and just kind of fine tune these. And then again we said that was a brush draw size of 22 so 20 oops I guess we don't need to do 22 for a move brush but we can go into our BI brush insert clothing M Eyelet. Same thing for this one. There we go. Decent. Let's go ahead and turn off our poly paint so we're not getting too distracted and we can go through and be like, okay, this needs to come. That's about right. space these out. Actually, it looks like mine are just a little bit more cramped than the real one. What I could do is I could delete one and then space them out a little bit more. But you know what? This is fine. 
good enough. Okay, so we go back to our wrinkles here. Oh, we'll click on this one, we'll hit D for dynamic, smooth those out a little bit. And then now when I'm looking at the wrinkle detail, um, like this wrinkle here, let's drop down to subdivision level three. We'll smooth this one out because these wrinkles tend to, let's also turn on transparency so we can in ghost, turn on Z add. And go through here and we can sculpt through and then they tend to kind of go between these here. And that's kind of true for all of these. It kind of um, kind of puffs out a little bit around here. So we're going to play that up just a little bit and go through and puff out around here and then smooth it back just a bit. And then on the inside too, yeah, and there's actually a little bit of wrinkling between this one and we kind of pull this out and then pull in where the eyelet is. And then we'll go through and we'll do a little bit of puffing with our clay brush, magnesium flake brush or two, I suppose. We'll go up to subdivision level four. There we go. And some of this, you can kind of play up these wrinkles a little bit. I'm gonna drop my Z intensity down a little because whenever you have your lazy radius on, it'll kind of exaggerate your strokes a little bit. So we can turn that down. play up a little bit of this. Again, just that. All right. And again, if you need to, you can alt tap your eyelets and we still have move topological on so you can go through here and you can adjust if you've done any sculpting that means you have to go through here and fix any of these. Now you'll probably want to make your brush size pretty big so you're not deforming it or again you, I think if you make it really small it'll also just grab and you don't have to worry about having any fall off. All right. Now laces we can get to Hmm, there's a couple different ways we can do these laces. We can do IMM brushes, or we can use these spheres and flatten them out. I think I'll just do these spheres. Let's see here. Um, sorry if I miss any questions. I'm a little bit behind. Hey, Ashley, thanks for showing up. Uh, time frame for you to expect new UV tools in ZBrush. Ah, that I don't know. Uh, if you missed that on the ZBrush 2018 ZBrush Summit, they did a little preview of it in there. Uh, Joseph Dresden and Paul Gabriel did a preview of it, and it uh, hasn't been released yet. Cool, awesome. Thanks for the links, pre drag. Um, let's see. Yeah, UVing. Uh, so when I'm doing just kind of concept meshes, what I'm hoping for, if you go to my R Station page, um, I use Houdini for a lot of my concept game reses and auto UVs and even baking if you want to. You can go to the game dev tool set and I go back and forth between uh, ZBrush and Houdini. So go Z into Houdini and then I do my processing in Houdini and then uh, a lot of cool stuff you can do in there. That's another program I use in tandem with ZBrush. Cool. Uh, how to control Z sphere, Z sphere twisting when using it to frame a uh, curve. Uh, so Z spheres, um, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that now. So we're going to use Z spheres to go ahead and put laces up this thing. So we're going to go through, we're going to append a Z sphere. Let's go ahead and select it. And then we'll hit E and scale this down. We'll hit W and move it up. And we'll just 
push this over here. So on either side of these, we can hit, and actually we'll scale this down just a little bit more. Uh, we'll hit Q, and then go into draw mode and hit uh, Shift, and we'll hit W, and we're just gonna basically be going through Q, which is draw mode, and then W, which is move. And we can go through and kind of lace these up. So I can go through here, and I can say, this one's gonna be on the top side, this one's gonna be on the bottom side, and then we can hit W, and again, we can move this where it's supposed to go now on the inside. Boy, I'm gonna lose my mind doing this. So uh, these are both on the outside here. I wanna hit Q here, and we'll go ahead and pull this up. So now we have a Z-sphere. Uh, if I hit A for adaptive skin, you're gonna see it's just gonna turn it into a Dynamesh. We can go down here to our adaptive skin, and we can say density down to one, Dynamesh resolution down to zero, hit A, A again, and this will be, ooh, get something weird. This will be our adaptive skin. What's going on here? Let's hit Q, let's Alt, let's hit A. Okay, that's fine, Q, Shift, W, A. Huh, I have never seen that before. Is it the scale we're working at? You can also do classic skinning, uh, which we go out of preview mesh, we can say use classic skinning. This will give you an even uh, more simplified, there's something going on here. Oh, there's a there was a Z-sphere inside. I don't know how I did that. There we go. This is classic skinning. This will give you a very, very simplified um, Z-sphere, and it's actually a little bit more useful to talk about twisting. So if we hit A, we can go through here, and you're going to see uh, if we hit rotate, we can rotate along a bone. We can rotate on just that uh, Z-sphere, but if you hold down Alt and rotate, uh, you're going to get this, and that's going to uh, rotate and also twist the geometry. So if you twist this one this way, and then you hit A, you're going to see this kind of twists that way. So if that's what you're talking about, uh, you can hold down Alt. Oops. Go into draw mode, hold down Alt. Nope. Don't go into draw mode. Go into rotate, hold down Alt, and you can just rotate your Z-spheres to untwist them. There we go. Or you can use, uh, go out of preview, turn off, use classic skinning, and then you can just use this updated skinning, and I think we'll stick with this one. Whoa, way off. So I'll hit W, and then let's go ahead and move these back to where they're supposed to go. Now, like I said before, these are supposed to be going on the top here. So this one will push out to the top. And be prepared for this to be a really exciting segment, is lacing up shoelaces. <sighs> okay, so we're gonna solo mode, hit Q, and we're just gonna drag these in. And then up here, we want this side uh, to go underneath here. So we're gonna go into solo mode, hit Q, and then W, we'll just drag that over. And we'll turn on transparency. And this is gonna come up through the bottom, hit Q, and just push that on through. Now, like I said, there is a couple different ways to do this. You can make an insert mesh brush that, dra that populates the eyelets and the shoelaces if you wanted to. Um, but in our case, I don't know if that's going to be overly useful. And as boring as this may be, uh, you can also use curve brushes, and you could try and manage those. Uh, but I think even even if I was using curve brushes, I would still use these spheres to get a nice, clean path through. So, okay. So we've got this, and then this is going to go under, and then on the next one up, it's going to go over. And on the Rocksteady, the Bebop shoes, um, they're not super realistic. I'm just looking at them and they're just, they basically just go, they're just lines. So we could get, we could have done that in the geometry, just um, But again, I'm kind of doing this for two purposes. If I was just doing his shoes, I might just lean into how his shoes are constructed. Uh, but I'm gonna use these for another project. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them semi-realistic. But again, depending on how stylized you want to go, you can, like I said, lean into that. So that goes up and over. And then on this side here, we are up and over. Now, before we get too far, let's make sure this is going to work. So I'm going to hit A to go into adaptive skin. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do is let's go ahead and 
Let's, I can hit Make Polymesh 3D, or I can go down here and I can hit Preview, Make Adaptive Skin, and it'll shoot out an adaptive skin here. So I'm going to go in here, and I guess we could play with it in here, but I'm just going to quickly append the skin Z sphere. I'm going to hide my Z sphere I'm working with, and then this is my geometry. So um, you can go through here. I mean, even at this point, we can hit Control W, make this all one polygroup. We can go through and do like a polish by features, close circle, and that'll go through and uh, make them a little bit more manageable. Now these are round, so you may have to go through here and do something like, you can do trim dynamic to go through and flatten these. Uh, what I'm hoping I can do is I can go through and I can say, everybody crush your fingers, polygroup, poly loop here. Oh, well, let's do this, we gotta uncap them first. So we're gonna go down to this cap here and we're gonna say Control Shift Alt, delete hidden, geometry modified topology delete hidden. And then go here and then delete hidden and then can we is there any possibility we can polygroup poly loop here here isolate this one oh yeah they start twisting so I'd have to be very careful about when it comes up and over I need to go and untwist those because ideally what I would do is I would just take these, this strip here, uh, delete hidden, hit control W, I can even simplify this, do insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and then we can just go through here and say Q mesh polygroup ball, or extrude polygroup ball, and just get a flat uh, version of this lace, and then we can go through here, we can make it thicker this way if we want, we can do uh, crease polygroup, crease level of one, smooth set of three, and then that could be our laces. Um, but it looks like that's not gonna work. Um, but that's okay, there's, there's alternatives we can go through. And also the other thing would be going to Transparency and Ghost. You'd have to go in here with like Move Topological and these bottom ones would have to be like up and over this way. So you can kind of see that working-ish, uh, but maybe not so great. Uh, Rick said, hey Michael, I just purchased your ZBrush Ideation Collection. It's been really helpful. Good, there's a lot of uh, videos in there, so I don't know if that works for or against it, but uh, hopefully, you know, if you can get through that content and you can, you don't have to master everything, but it's just a resource available for you. So you can kind of get, you know, what's available in ZBrush in, the, in your head and then uh, in just kind of problem solving outside the box. And then when you go and you need to make something later on, you can go, hey, you know what, what was that one technique? And then you can go back in the videos and kind of check that out. So yeah, I think hopefully it's a decent, uh, just to kind of go back and reference thing. Um. Yeah, so, you know, if I do want to go through here, oh boy, do I want to go through here and do all these laces and then trim it and then rebuild it with zero mesher, or do I want to just go through with an IMM and just go back and forth? Let's try that. Um, I'm going to, here, I'm going to pause real quick. I'll be right back. You know what? It's been years since I sculpted with red wax. That's kind of neat. And actually, uh, it makes me realize my cloth's actually pretty bad. But that's okay. We'll leave that for now. Okay, so I'm going to skip. I'll, I'll go through and I'll do these laces later. So let's talk about doing those bebop shoes. So we're going to lean into um, just doing a little bit more of a stylized version of this. Before we do that, we can go ahead and put in our converse 
logo here. So we'll do Shift Z and we'll go ahead and Alt tap this one. And we'll just put in, oh, we, for, we forgot some eyelets. So we can eyeball this or we can not trust our eyeballs. And we can go through here and we can say, eyelets are gonna be about here. And the logo is gonna be about here. And then again, RGB intensity, color, fill object. We'll knock that back. Okay, so how do we make that logo and how do we make it uh, fit this? So we can, there's a couple different ways we can do this. I think we'll take the easy route. Um, and this eyelet here, we'll go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll put these, you know, are those eyelets smaller? Or is it my eyeballs? I think those are smaller. Good. So here we're going to go to B, I, clothing, M, eyelet. These ones are going to be smaller. Oh, we got to go back uh, subdivision level. So we'll alt tap this one. And then we'll make our brush size a little smaller. Maybe say 16, maybe 17. Hold down control. And that'll be those eyelets. Perfect. Okay, now, now this one. So we're going to go through here. We're going to duplicate this off again. We're going to hold down control shift and we're going to do a slice circle. And we're going to go solo mode here with this outside edge selected. We did duplicate that off, right? Or you know what? I duplicated off the eyelets. This one we want to duplicate. So with this one selected, control shift, we're going to isolate this one. We're going to do delete lower. And we're just going to go through and we're going to slice uh, that circle. If we want to be a perfect circle, let's change out the square center. And that might be a little big. Hold down space bar. There we go. Control shift isolate. <clears throat> this one here, delete hidden. And it went all the way through our object. That's okay. Delete hidden. We just need this side here. And then again, we're going to go through and we'll do our trusty you see, I do a lot of zero meshing. Zero mesh, zero mesh, zero mesh. I'm gonna keep this one maybe a little higher res. Uh, I'll go out of solo mode. We'll do a, just a quick project all. Sure. And then uh, one more time, we'll give this, it looks like it's like painted on. It's very, very thin. So you know what, we could have just stamped that with a texture, but you know what, I like having things separate. So I'm gonna do a very, very thin Q mesh polygroup ball, and we're gonna just pull this out just like this. Hold on, shift, push that back. There we go. Now we can do a crease polygroup, crease level of one, smooth sub div of three. That'll work. And hold on, shift, turn up all our colorize. And there we go. So, like I said, I'm gonna skip these laces for now, and we're just gonna lean into um, doing the bebop style shoes now. He doesn't even have eyelets, and he just has these crisscrossy things. He has some bows in here, which we can do, and then he has this kind of whale uh, skin, and then he has the laces that go back around. So let's do this. Let's say turn up perspective. Let's fit these to our bebop guy. So one way we can do that is, first of all, let's save this off. Bebop. Converse working. And then, how do I want to do this? Because there's these subdivision levels in here. I don't want to lose. These ones don't actually have subdivision levels. They're just kind of there. So what we're going to do, what are we going to do? This is what we're going to do. We're going to say all high. There's a Z plugin you can use that will be uh, Z Cleanup Master, Clean Tool Master. And then down here, it's uh, dynamic subdivisions to actual subdivisions. So we're going to just do that. So we saved out our working file. We're going to convert everything DS all to real. Oh, you can't do DS all on a Z sphere. Uh, in fact, we can go ahead and just delete those out of there. We don't need them. And make sure DS all gets ran. Yay. Now, when we do a merge visible, that'll go ahead and merge out. Uh, the shoe with all these. And if we ever want to get these back, we can reconstruct subdivision at levels, no big deal. So we can take the shoe and go to our Bebop block out. Oh man, were we working on a weird axis? I didn't even notice. Uh, oh well. Uh, so we'll go here and we'll say append. 
our merged shoe here, hit F to frame, and it's little baby size down there. Huh. Let's go into deformation, unify. Nope. Let's select our shoe first. We appended it so it's at the bottom. And then we'll say deformation unify. There, that's something we can use. Shift, and then shift. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put this into our scene onto his little fat feet. So let's turn on our transparency. And we'll go through here. And now I can start. Uh, he doesn't even have eyelets, so I don't really need to worry too much about like, oh, the wrinkle detail and the eyelets and stuff. We can just kind of squish this into place here. And his feet, I can change. Let's go out of transparency mode. In fact, let's make sure his shoes look right. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and Alt. We'll get rid of that. And then, um, so we are going to make some pretty drastic changes here. In fact, if we want to, let's do this. Texture, import, turbo power bebop reference. Let's match our reference. Texture, select it, add it. Uh, these shoes we don't need anymore. Let's delete them out of here. So here we go. Turn off our floor. So we've got him. Oh man, we need to make his head a lot bigger too. So we've got his body vaguely correct. And we've got his pants. Uh, he, now he's bending his legs. So we can kind of match that here to his knee. And it looks like his pants are a little bit long. Let me pull these up just a little bit. And then these shoes here, we can just move them up. And it's going to be like, OK, they're going to be about this low. We can squash them a bit. So that's about where his shoe, And then these are going to flop over to the side. So this is about where his shoes would end up, maybe. And then we can make some maybe a little more artistic decision. Like I said before, uh, we'll go to our shoe here. We don't need. I mean, it does have a circle, but we're going to just replace this. We're going to take the circle, Control Shift A, Control Shift Drag to invert that, delete hidden. Um, what are you yelling at me for? Oh, when we merge, it actually maintained our subdivision levels. That was nice of it. I uh, will delete lower, delete hidden, isolate these ones here. Uh, let's go ahead and grab all these pieces here. Here, 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 here. Jeez. Eyelets, invert. Actually, you know what? Don't even need that. Invert that. We don't need this, or don't we need that? Geometry modified topology delete hidden. And then now, I'm not even sure. I don't even think he has this on the back. Delete hidden. So that's basically uh, what he has. Doesn't even have a tongue, but we can use that for constructing. And it looks like this piece here is a quite a bit bigger. So good enough. For our work, he does have uh, quite a bit fatter feet. So you know what? I think this will be fine. So we can go ahead and alt tap his body, control shift to bring his feet back, and we can modify. You know what? I do like his legs a little bit longer. So now we can modify his feet to fit these shoes a little bit. Now they might actually be a little bit thin. We can go ahead and scale these out. And let's turn off, well, I guess we don't have that on. I'm going to turn off uh, poly paint for everything so I can see a little bit better. these shoes. I'm going to alt tap these shoes and we're going to, oh, we still have move topologicals or not. So under here, turn off topological. I want to move all of these things this way a little bit. Okay, so unmask this. We'll go through and we can read Dynamesh. It's a little bit low. Let's move stronger. We'll crank that up. And we'll go ahead and say, these are our new proportions for our lower legs. 
You know what? I thought I got a little bit further than this. Did I really not? There we go. Um, yeah, so we got the little kneecap here, and we got his lower leg muscles again. If we, we'll, we'll clean that up. Like I said, I thought we got a little further with his base body, but I might be confusing that with another project. Okay, so we have our shoe generally in place. So what I can do is I can go through, and it, it does have, we can reconstruct back through all three of these uh, to our lowest, which is nice. Uh, but if we didn't, we could also split them up into its own uh, geometry, and we could do that as well. Let's go to his pants here, and we'll refit his pants just, to, just so it doesn't bug me too much. Okay, so we've got his new shoes here. Uh, we got his feet conforming to his new shoes, which is one way to do anatomy. Go out of transparency here. There we go. Feet, fit, shoes. Form, follows, function. So, okay, I think that'll work. Well, I'll tap the shoes here, and we'll just chub this out just a little bit more. All right, so we've got some uh, little Converse sneaks on him, and we can go through here. We do have subdivision history on here. So again, we're working as low as we can just to pull the overall envelope, not get too wobbly with our geometry, even though we've pushed and pulled this in pretty drastic ways. Um, and then if we want to, we can go to subdivision level four, all the way back up to our original. We can say delete lower, and then if I want to break these out into our component parts, which in this case I think I do. Uh, we can take this one here. Oops. Control shift. I like to do control shift A. Make sure I grab all my poly groups. Go ahead and split hidden and then alt tap this one. Control shift A. Split hidden. Alt tap this one. Control shift A. Oops. We got some shared poly groups through here. With these showing, let's just do an auto groups. Isolate this one. Split hidden. And then now on every single one of these you can go back through and you can reconstruct. Reconstruct, reconstruct, reconstruct. Now, it might have been a better idea for me to do all that with a mirrored object here, but we also don't even have to mirror. So I'm going to go over here. We're going to say all higher under our here. So we'll do all high. And then uh, you can see over here I have a ray mesh. Uh, so I can turn that on and off. But through each one of these, you can go in here if you want to do just have a, an instance over here that can be updated on the fly. You can turn on array mesh, lock position, lock size, reset, mirror across the X, and then, wait a minute, not B. Um, again, this probably would have been a lot, made a lot more sense to do this uh, when it was all together and then split it apart. But you know what? Hindsight's 20, 20, lock position, lock size, reset, X mirror, ray mesh, lock position, lock size, reset, mirror across the X. So now I can go through here and I can be uh, sculpting and the other side will update automatically and I can just turn off array mesh if it's getting in my way. So there's that. Um, let's see. Uh, it's been a while since I watched the show. Um, only characters like Shredder and April used to have normal human sized portions. Everybody else had different stylized portions, even the turtles themselves. Yeah, and this guy's like his head is massive. I didn't realize how big his head was. So we're gonna have to go back to our base mesh and scale that up quite a bit. I mean, and we can take artistic licenses. Sometimes I say uh, I'm taking artistic license because I'm lazy and I don't want to change it, but you know, sometimes it's for a good reason. Uh, if you run into the issue of Dynamesh shattering, Swiss cheesing when trying to Dynamesh a mesh at a high Dynamesh, uh, I've tried reducing polygroups, checking thin areas, union deformer. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Um, let's see. Um, So, how can I fix Dynamesh, Swiss cheese, and shattering? Joseph Drust will walk you through that. When in doubt, look up Joseph Drust. Um, on the topic, how much will I, how much will it cost for a character like this? Uh, like fully done, um, I'm super expensive, but mostly because I don't make anything anymore. So if I'm going to bother sitting down and doing something. Um, you know, and also I'm not a huge fan of just like making things. Uh, I mean, for that's kind of hard to 
hard to say. It kind of depends on your hourly rate and it depends on how much experience you have. The more experience you have and the faster you can go, you don't want to go like, well, I'm only going to charge you this much because, you know, all that experience that you've gained, you know, you can charge for that experience as well. So you don't want to undersell yourself or uh, undersell yourself out of the market or, you know, you want to get paid for the time you put in and the experience or the time you put in to gain the experience and speed that you've gotten to that point. So you don't want to you know, short yourself. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick save just so we can have access to this. But, um, gosh, characters get expensive, man. I'm going to go through here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to turn off a ray mesh for this one so I can, for all of these actually. I can always turn them on quickly later. Uh, but I'm just going to go through here and turn these off. And also for his feet, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those feet. I just want to be able to see his shoes when I go through here. So now his these things go back quite a bit. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to Alt-Tap this one. We're going to hit W, and then just, we're going to scale these um, back this way. And we can also go down, instead of just a little one, scale them back this way. And then now we can just pull that low-res envelope out. And then when we subdivide back up, or we can even delete higher if we want to. It's not like this had any real crazy good detail. In fact, we probably will when we start doing like the whale whale neck look that he has. And then this one too, we'll go to the subdivision level one and we'll just pull this back so that it meets up correctly. And then for this one, like I was saying, he's got these kind of ridges in here. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go to my polyframe here. We're gonna do a group by normals, whoops. Group by normals, where is it at? Auto groups, group by normals, geez. Um, so now we're gonna hold down control shift, isolate this top one here, delete hidden. Uh, we can go up to subdivision level four if we want to. Actually, before we do that, let's go to subdivision level four. Delete lower, isolate this top poly group here. Delete hidden. And I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna start slicing uh, this thing up. So we can do panel loops. So we're gonna hold down control shift, slice curve. Let's make sure it's vaguely right. So he looks like he's got one right down the middle. And then these are a little bigger here. So he's got one down the middle and then one here and then a littler one kind of here. And on the side here, looks like he's got another one right here. Something like this. So uh, we can go ahead and use, we can use panel loops for this. You could do it now if you wanted to. You can go down here to edge loop and you can click panel loops and start doing that. Uh, I like nice geometry though, you know me. So zero measure, half, depth size down to zero, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, zero mesh. There we go. And then I'll do another half. I'll do another half. I like to go low, nice geo. That might be, is that too low? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now this, uh, we can go in here to panel loops. You can also just go through and Z modeler this. That probably might actually be my preferred method. Uh, you can go through here. I'll just show you real quick. You can go through here. You can say Q mesh, all polygons. Pull these back. Go ahead and flip. And then for every single one of these poly groups, you can go through and you can maybe do like an inset poly group all. You can do, oops, region. You can go through and inset all these. And then you can go through and you can say like, um, you can go through and Q mesh. And you can just pull down, hold down shift, Q mesh poly group all. And you can hold down shift and pull these out uh, if you want to, or you can actually do a Q mesh and then you can go through and you can bevel in between and you can get like those ridges built in like this. Or let's try, let's just try it. We'll do panel loops. So now this outer shell is a, basically where I want it to end up. So I'm gonna do elevation. Let's do elevation of zero. Um, negative 100 will make sure that it ends up right there. Uh, but we can bump about just a little bit, get that to read a little bit better. Polish, I'm gonna turn down to zero. Thickness, I think, is about right. Loops, I don't need that many. We'll do like three loops here. And I also don't know if I want to do um, double turned on or off. If I have double turned on, which I do have, um, it's going to be uh, an individual piece. So I hold that control shift and then control shift A, and every single one of these is a piece. However, if I turn double off and do panel loops, it's going to. Um, I not have inner inner panel loops? No. Hmm. Well, if you do this 
uh, it'll actually leave a geometry in between like a couch cushion so you can go through here and you can smooth this out you're gonna see that's the result you get so we can hit D for dynamic uh, let's do it on crease all so we can get that look so it kind of depends on how you want it to be constructed I guess it gives us a little bit more leeway and I like the cleaner back if I just undo that and we'll just keep double on now, if I want these bevels, when I hit panel loops, you're going to see there's a split in between them. Uh, it doesn't really bother me too much, but if you want those to be closer together, go down here to your bevel profile and just make it so this bevel touches that midline, because that's going to be where it meets up with the other, other bevel. So then, um, again, panel loops, hit D for dynamic, and that'll just get those to meet up a little closer. Now, if you want them to overlap a little bit after you hit dynamic, you can probably over crank it a bit. And then panel loops, D, there you go. Now they all meet up. So we'll go out of solo mode here. Is that about right? I think we're gonna call that close enough. So now we're gonna go back here. We're gonna go back to subdivision level one and we're gonna delete higher because I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more. So we're gonna say group by normals and I'm gonna clip. Uh, that's okay. We're gonna take this, we're gonna Q mesh polygroup all, and we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna over crank that thickness all the way around. And we're also gonna add a little bit of breathing room here. And also let's maybe pull this up. Now I do wanna flatten the tops of these things here. A couple different ways you can do that. You can clip it down. You can just take all these and um, hold on, alt. Just kinda of clip that back or you can try like Z scaling back. I think this will work fine. What am I going for here? Something like this, maybe? Okay, and then also, um, we can go through here and we can say, what can we say? We can say dynamic, crease level of two, smooth set of three. And that'll give us that result. Let's say smooth to a four. Uh, you can also go through here. You can add bevels and you can add um, control loops and stuff like that. But I think that'll work okay for our purposes for now. Uh, this stuff it actually looks like in the reference, these are a little bit sharper and they meet up. So I'm going to use my move AQ and we're going to pull out those corners here. And then now as we go up in our subdivision levels, we're probably going to have to continue pulling those out. Eh, actually that worked okay. And now this tongue is just going to be crisscrossed not even crisscrossed. They're just going to be lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can use this geometry for that purpose. We're going to delete lower, control shift, isolate that, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Oops. Oh, let's do a group by normals. Group by normals doesn't work because we have a softer edge. You can drop that max angle down, but it may not work. Do open circle and it'll have a easier time finding your normals. Control shift, tap delete hidden. That's a little trick for like Dynamesh or higher resolution with softer edges. The open circle algorithm will do a little bit better job. Use that in conjunction with Project Primitive. Um, I'm not sure how much time it would take me to actually finish this character out. It also depends on like, do you want like crazy detail? Do you want like a 3D sculpt for a 3D print that's going to be 18 inches or 6 inches? Um, you know, if I was doing this for a video game, you'd have to go through the map baking process and stuff like that. So that adds a little bit of time and production and then texturing and materials and making sure it's optimized. So that adds a lot of time as the optimization process, making sure your edge loops are set up for animation, going through and putting mouth bags and teeth and tongue, or if you're not gonna be animating the face, that can save you a little bit of money. So it kind of depends, a lot of ins, a lot of outs. Um, let's see. Zebra's actually butcher zero meshing landscape tiles made in Blender. Huh. I'm not sure why that would be. Um, so when would you use Sculptress? I if I if I wanted to, if I was had this as a 3D print and I wanted to like decimate it down and then I wanted to go add detail, I'd use Sculptress Pro to add local subdivisions. Uh, I also use it to clean up my Dynamesh edges sometimes when they get a little bit squirrely. Other than that, um, I don't use Sculptress Pro super much. But don't take that as it's not useful. Just take it as my workflow isn't really Sculptures Pro 
oriented, I guess. Let's go drive down to set of level one again. And I'll pull these up and in, up and in. Sorry, I'm kind of noodling this stuff. This is kind of silly, but certain things bug me sometimes. Okay, so we're going to alt tap this shoe and we're going to do, let's, let's try and do the same thing we just did. Uh, we can also use these with uh, curve brushes to go through and put straps across here. So we'll see how this goes. So we'll do um, slice and it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven even slices. Or you know what we could do? Seven even slices up to about this point here. So we're going to isolate this one. We're going to delete hidden. Let's see if we can have Ziri Mesher continue to be the hero of the day. All right, so we're going to isolate this one here, delete hidden. We're going to say Ziri Mesh, that size down to zero, half, 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 half. Oh, stop getting caught up there. What are you doing? So whenever it gets into this kind of little hang up here, try going into like weld points and see if you can't get it to break off there. There we go. So now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, let's do half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Man, zero mesh is good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So we can use these to go through and kind of create overlapping geometry. Now every single one of these I can go through, I can do polygroup poly loop here. Here, here, and just holding, oops, laying on alt, making alternate polygroups here. Now you can go through here and you can use the exact same uh, methodology for your panel loops, so polish down to zero. Uh, loops, we, let's turn loops down to one. We don't need that many loops. We can just say, hey, you know what, extrude this stuff. Um, our bevel here, our elevation, we'll put back at zero. And we got a bunch of space in between there. Polish is down to zero. What's going on? Let's crank this up. What are you doing, panel loops? Let's take that thickness down. Maybe that's why. Okay. We'll crank up that thickness a little bit. We, we you know what? We can always go through and make these thicker or thinner. That's uh, trivial. So we'll go through here and we'll overlap these a little bit. Oops. Good enough. So we've gone through here, we've made our laces, give or take, we can go into solo mode here. Now these are all the same on the back, so we can uh, Q mesh polygroup all, and we can pull these in. We could actually, when we did this, we could have regrouped these panels, and that way we would have made all of these the same polygroup, or we can try isolating just purple, do Control shift x to expand, Control shift drag to invert our selection, Control w make that all in polygroup, and now we can go through this side and we can fatten them up from that direction. Uh, let's go ahead and run a crease dynamic. Let's do crease level of one, smooth subdiv of three, and that'll kind of be our shoelaces. Uh, let's do crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. So that'll kind of be what they are. And now we can go through here. We can mass move all of them. And we'll go ahead and crank this up. How are we doing on time? I got 15 minutes. Um, and you know what? Let's go ahead. This is when we had the eyelets on there. So let's um, get rid of some of this detail. It's a little bit weird looking without the eyelets sitting there. And then now we can drop down to like submitted level three. Like we were saying before, uh, this guy's got some pretty well worn shoes here. So we can go through and we can kind of bang them up a little bit more. make those laces fit. And if you wanted to have like a mass in here, uh, just to make sure there's no um, nothing bad going on on the inside or it's catching light or something like that, or even when you're going to game res, it might be, make it a little bit easier, you can certainly do that. But I think this will work fine. And even if we wanted to put that back that strap that was along the back here back in. Why is it acting weird? Lazy radius is off. Um, we could go ahead and put that back in, but I think he'll be fine without it. He's got some knockoff brand. Look here, and then again, we're 
just simplifying these wrinkles just a little bit. All right. Now these we can, let's go down here to auto masking. Then we'll turn on top logical. Oops. Just turn off, uh, on the move brush, turn on top logical. And then you can go through here and you can add a little bit of variation between here. So you can kind of move this one up and then this one this way and then this one. And if you want to make these things easier to grab, you can put an edge loop right down the middle. That might make them a little bit easier. And then you can also go through here and you can like do an inflate or a deflate. Or you can go through and use Z Modeler to make them uh, thicker or thinner. But I think that'll be fine. And you know what? Let's go ahead and let's say apply that dynamic subdivision. And we can add a little bit of, because yeah, it's actually, there's kind of on the inside, oddly. I'm not sure how these physically work, but you know, it's the Ninja Turtles universe. They got a little bit different technology. There we go. Now, these things here, we're going to go to sort of level one, and these are just going to be like splayed out. So I'm going to hold down control and mask, control tap to blur that mask, control tap to invert that mask. And we can try going through here. Let's do one side and splay it out. And then we can do another side and hold down control to uh, kind of splay it out. And then this backside got left behind. That's okay. We'll go through here and we'll see if we can't. Now, if we wanted to, we could Z remesh all of this again, just Z remesh the outside and then go through and resculpt. It's not like we did any crazy, awesome sculpting job. So redistributing this geometry wouldn't be the world's worst thing to do, but um, we'll see how that plays. So we kind of splayed it out a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring his feet back and we'll go ahead and go back up in subdivision. And now that we have this information, we can go through here and we can kind of lean into this kind of back area, maybe being a little bit more wrinkly and the side area as well. Like we said before, if this is too much, you can drop down to like sediment level three, delete higher, and then just rework your secondary forms and then subdivide. And then your, um, your very detailed forms will follow along a little bit uh, closer maybe. Something like that. Uh, and he also has a bow and the laces do go around the back. Um, so your artwork, uh, artwork and art station may ask how you make a different pose with your model without destroying the mesh or cleaning up after posing. Did you rig it? Um, if I'm just doing concept stuff, we'll actually pose this guy out. Um, if you do Z sphere, oh, it's on my, I have it on my, um, I'm not sure if I have it on my YouTube channel. Z sphere rig. Oh, okay. Yeah. Z sphere rig posing. You can go through and you can check these out. Um, that's posing wires. This one's posing a dog, but you can do the same thing for humans. Looks like, oh, somewhere in here going through, we did feathers and stuff. I don't know. You can check that out. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with. Now you will have to do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, you can do Z sphere rigging or you can do topology or, um, what's it called? Transpose master. And uh, you do want low subdivision levels for everything. Uh, if you're going to go the rigging route, uh, the only reason I wouldn't necessarily do that is because then you get into, oh, now you have to do a game race. You got to paint weights. You got to bake all your detail out. You have to do maybe um, sculpt corrected blend shapes, go and do maybe muscle sims. And at the end of the day, now you've got a million dollar production model um, when all you really needed to do was bend an arm and then pump a bicep out. So you can spend 15 minutes bending an arm and sculpting a bicep, or you can spend 
two months <laughs> putting together. I mean, that's not to say you can't go into like Mixamo or something and drop a rig in there and paint weights real quick and have a rig in 15 minutes. I'm not saying that, but to do a real super duper control rig with all the bells and whistles and you know, you, you need also putting a control rig on a multi-million polygon mesh. Um, you can do that in ZBrush by using subdivision levels and then it'll bring your details back. Um, but when you're doing that in production, uh, not, not quite that easy. Your maps have to kind of follow through it. Uh, which software do you prefer for retopology? I like Maya, I like Blender, I like Modo, I like ZBrush. Um, it's been a while, but Topo Gun was pretty good. A lot of people like 3D Coat. Any way to decimate a model and keep the poly paint for reproject on low res version? I believe when you go to Z plugin decimation master, there should be a use and keep poly paint. So it's actually going to look at your poly paint and evaluate details in your poly paint and then put more geometry detail in there. Hey, Geo, thanks for showing up. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and now this one, I won't I won't feel so bad about doing uh, Z-spheres for this part because it's going to be pretty quick. So let's see. We're again, we're just grabbing this reference here and it's just a basic loop. Basic loop, we can mirror that two strands and then a wrap around the back. Um, this wrap around the back, we can do pretty easily. So what we can do is we can, let's go ahead and we'll still divide this up and this will be our mesh here. We'll duplicate this off. Whoops. Go into solo mode here. Okay, hold on. What's going on here? I'll tap this one. If we duplicate this off, it disappears. You know, sometimes it does get in a weird state where, ooh, let's see if I can figure this out. Uh, size and position, Y position. Anyway, I'm uh, not sure why that happens sometimes, but occasionally when I go in through and make major changes or do unify, sometimes that'll happen. Anyway, this is close enough. So we have our duplicate here. Hold down Control Shift, isolate this one. We're going to delete lower. Um, and then we're going to slice right through where we want that, um, that lace. Now we could do, uh, like what we did before, slice with a B radius and actually just make this, let's slice it. Looks like it kind of goes straight back. I'll slice it back through here. Uh, you can use a B radius through here, and then we can isolate this part, and then you can just uh, Z remesh this into a piece that's usable. So we can delete hidden, and then we can say Z remesh. That size into zero half. And if it's having trouble keeping your corners, um, you can go through and help it. Uh, but honestly, I think this will work fine. So I'm going to help it out a little bit. We're going to go through here. We're going to go to Insert Single Ledge Loop, hold down Alt, and we'll just delete all these extraneous ledge loops here. Oops. That might be a little more difficult. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's smooth this out. And we'll zero mesh half. Smooth this out. Okay, you know what would have been better? Let's rethink this. Oh, so we got this. Uh, let's go through here. I think it creased everything when we sliced it, maybe. So let's go through here and do a um, Polish by Features open circle. And just smooth that out first. And now we can do a Ziri Mesh half. Oops. Um, isolate it. Delete hidden. Ziri Mesh half. 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 Now you could also just, like slice it and take your IMM brush and make it go along that stroke curve but I'm thinking this might be okay as well. Half, half. Now let's simplify this. Insert, single edge loop, hold down Alt. Um, you can even go through here every other one and be like, you know what, I don't need all that information. So we'll go through and this can be our shoelace. So we can make it thicker or thinner after we give it some depth. So we'll go through here and we'll see how this works. So we'll go out of solo mode here and then we'll go through and we'll say Q mesh polygroup all 
pull that out. And then if you go from top to bottom, actually let's do this, let's do uh, group by normals. And now we've got a top one, we can make it thinner this way, or we can make it thinner this way just by holding down shift. Let's do a crease, we can do a crease PG, crease level two, smooth set of a three. And that can be our um, lace that goes around. Now this one, I uh, kind of messed up, it needs to go all the way around, so that's okay. We'll say delete single poly here and here. Let's do shift D and we'll say bridge two holes here to here, and let's pull out, and you know what? Now you go all the way around. Yay. So now we'll do uncrease all, crease a group by normals. Let's go ahead and even this out just a little bit. Actually, I could have done uh, tight round corners, and that would have maybe done a better job here. Or we can, you know what? We can even do this. We can do uh, polish by features, close circle. We just tap that, and that'll go through and uh, even our geometry out just a little bit. And then we turn D for dynamic back on. Let's do crease PG, there we go. So we've got that lace that goes around the whole back. And if we want to, we can say, you know what, let's apply that subdivision level. Now we can go through here and you can add just a little bit of, you know, this, this thing going in a little bit, getting maybe twisted up. Just adding a little bit of, again, visual interest on this thing. Okay, so now that bow, I'm trying to think, you know what, we don't even need to use these first for that. We can do, we can do better than that. So let's alt tap the body here, alt E M. I'm gonna go into my custom brush and we'll just grab a cylinder 16 and we'll pop that here. We'll go turn on LSIM. We'll scale it out this direction and we're gonna say split mass points. We're gonna scale this back. And then really all I need is this loop here. We can hold down control shift and go to select lasso for that. Invert that, delete hidden. Let's turn on double temporarily, and then we can go through here. Hold down Control Shift and Alt. Eh, let's do this. Control Shift Alt for these ones. Delete hidden, and then now we can grab these ones and pull them in. That'll work. And now we can do a Q mesh polygroup ball. We'll pull this in here. Let's turn off double so we can flip. And then now again, crease PG. Crease level two, smooth set of a three, crease polygroup. And this can be our bow. And if we want to, we can hold down control and just drag along here and that will mask one side. And then we can go through here and we can just alternate these masks. We can flatten this out a little bit, rotate it around, whatever you want to do. And then if you want to, um, Let's turn off that symmetry. Delete hidden. We can duplicate this. We can mirror it across the X. We can hit W. Can move it back over. And then this can be the other side. And then we can put a little knot in there. We can put strings down. And uh, we're getting pretty close. So I'm going to call that a day. Uh, program has a magic, I'll do the UVing button for you. A lot of them do have, I mean, you can just do auto UVs. Probably Houdini is the one that I've gotten the closest to giving me something where I may or may not have something production ready. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, thicker and thinner with uh, Q mesh without extruding, that's just holding down shift. So we can go down here and when you hold it, have a poly frame, let's do shift D. Uh, so you have a poly group here, we can do Q mesh poly group all. And then you, yeah, when you just drag it out, it's gonna wanna add an edge ring, but if you hold down shift, it'll pull along that surface normal, or if you hold down control, it'll pop out a copy. You can do stuff like that. But uh, yeah, shift is how you wanna do that. Cool, all right, everybody. Thanks very much for showing up. And um, I'm going to try to stream this Thursday, but boy, I had like four things dropped on my plate. I, and, uh, you know, a lot of stuff going on, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so anyway, we got our guy. He's got some shoes now. Uh, we do have, do we have a ray mesh still turned on for these things? Yeah, we got a ray mesh. We can go ahead and maybe do a render with our ray mesh turned on. Do these things have a ray mesh? Yes, they do. Do these? No, these don't. But anyway, a little bit closer. I'm actually, you know what? Uh, speaking of thickening things up, 
Um, it might be worthwhile to drop down and then thicken those up a little bit because these are, I mean, they are pretty thin in here too, but I like to over crank a little bit from a distance. They look very, very thin. So cool. Thanks everybody. And I'll see you next time.